Hey guys, we're testing MASH. So MASH is the newest raid character added, otherwise known as Buff Boy. I don't think anyone would ever call him that though. No way, freaking Fortnite? No freaking way. Anyways, I just tested Kermy, so if you want to see how good Kermy is, then uh, go watch the last video, gang. So, I haven't seen anything about MASH, and I actually forgot how his abilities are, so I gotta go check them real quick. Realize I have abilities on. Well, time to go back. We're heading home. Alright. One, blah, blah, blah. Two, blah, blah, blah. Three, blah, blah, blah. Four. Alright. No freaking way, John Smith. No freaking way. John Smith. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and start out with dimensions. But first, I'm gonna make my predictions. Do I think he's gonna be better than Mihawk or Sukuna? Yeah. I think he is gonna be. Wait, wait, wait. He's leaving in 80 days? What? That's so long. Also... Are they not going to update for 40 days or something? Because none of the characters are getting removed for 40 days. Just realize that. Okay, right, whatever. Alright, let's go and start with Dimensions. EA has warning. Definitely a startling sound, but it's startling for a reason. It's there to get your attention. After you get that EA warning, it just kind of sits in the back of your mind. Most of watches are just pulse alarms, but they do build a small layer of anticipation and anxiety. Pops for a large storm, there's a certain vibe in the atmosphere. And it can be difficult to explain. I mean, anything can be sunny out and nice out, but there's just an eerie feeling. Some people complain about aches and elbows on their knees. This is where that saying, it's always calm before the storm comes on. You just know something's off. Eventually, the atmosphere begins to produce a large, cumulative dust clouds. That would form to large supercells. That one's in place for a dangerous storm. Never on phase two, the it's getting late in the evening, and the sky to the west is extremely dark. You watch as the impending storm approaches. At this point, the leaves on the trees begin to turn over, and the birds quit shooting. All the animals, they know something's up, they know something's coming. Usually, you're sitting in your living room, full of weather on, the meteorologist is monitoring the situation, and lightning flares off in the distance. You frequently walk back and forth on the TV to the back window, look at the clouds and the approaching thunderstorm. You may even see a shell cloud or a darkest cloud, and sometimes you may even see sky clouds, which are these little long-finger looking things that sit down from the darkest cloud. Sky stands for 17 US under deck. Many people actually believe them to be tornadoes, but those rotations are not tornadoes, they are just SLCs, staring at the clouds. Just follow along. The meteorologist on the TV then notices something along the radar. Okay, or a rare indication of rotation. Suddenly, a tornado warning is issued for your area, and a tornado siren sound. Some of the earlier EAS sound, they sound pretty creepy. I think this moment is a large part of what makes tornadoes so scary. The dual tone of tornado slash air raid slash silver sirens just has a creepy distance to it. Different sirens create different sounds, but eight ten quarts to me sounds the most eerie. Take a listen. It almost like a creepy choir, or perhaps a trumpet sound in the end days of revolution. The show of these things is also pretty creepy. There are many eerie vibes in the approach stage of a tornado, but there's one video that captures it very well. This video is captured by Rodeo Co. 2007, and it does a great job of capturing the atmosphere before tornado hits. This video is before the infamous May 22, 2011, and Java DF5. These stories are currently located on Rangeline Road, and all you can see is a link of darkness behind these stores. That's actually a massive tornado. Here's the same street, the same stores, a few hours after the tornado passed. These guys are very dodgeable, and we see the creatures that are stuck red light. I mean, oh my gosh, many stars are like a massive DF5 tornado approaching you. Terrifying. Phase one and phase two are pretty common and tornado by the end of the day. My own city usually about two tornado ones a year. I've had one yesterday. Now the next phase is actually encountering a tornado and going through that experience. It's thankfully pretty unlikely. I have personally never been directly hit by a tornado, but many people have, and have lived to tell the experience. The most common description of such a terrifying event is the freight train sound that the tornado makes as it approaches. And I heard it. Please say you just have a train while you're sure that. Can you imagine shutting a closet or a basement in the dark and hearing a freight train like sound slowly getting closer and closer? It would be terrible. There are many videos to watch on YouTube of people hiding in closets or bathrooms and hearing that awful sound of their houses being destroyed. After the event, they walk out and see nothing left. One of the more famous videos is that Parkersburg graduation party. They see the tornado approaching, they all take shelter, and then when it hits, it's just a horrifying sound. This is why nature may be done. Often suffering from the condition of tornadoes is the worst version of astrophobia, which is the fear of thunderstorms. Tornadoes are a force of nature that need to be taken seriously. But you actually fear tornadoes, and what you do it once confirms you. Well, you shouldn't necessarily fear tornadoes. I think a healthy amount of fear is, of course, enough to keep you safe. But the odds of actually being tornado are extremely slim. In fact, there's people that live in Oklahoma, or Kansas, or Iowa, or Alabama, their entire lives, and they have never seen tornadoes. You take proper precautions, you're gonna be fine. General rule of thumb is the center part of the lowest level in your home or building. Obviously, a basement, you want to be in your basement, but you don't have a basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. A basement, you want to be in your room. Alright, he's not really that good for dimensions. Um, the problem is I can't scale him to any other characters because I haven't done this dimension with very many characters. I've done it with like Odin, Shadow Monarch, Christmas Saber, uh, Kurumi. That's about it. But I'm pretty sure from what I've seen from those characters, he's pretty slow. And there's still 20 minutes till raid starts, so while we wait, I'm gonna do the one minute test. Alright, so he got the boss on the 7.2, which I don't think is too bad. Actually, never mind, I think that's pretty bad. But we'll have to wait and see until raid is here. Actually, we can get a little sneak peek of his boss damage by just doing boss rush. I don't know why I didn't think of that one. I usually do that pretty much every video. Probably should have done that. Anyways, let's do boss rush now. Alright, Gus. It's raid time, and you know what that means? It's time to do raid. So we're gonna do monkey raid, and we're gonna we're gonna see how gamer mashes. And if he's the gamer, then I'll tell you. If he's not, I'll tell you. All right, let's get to Giga.
actually forgot how much he did. I have to go. I have to go check. All right, so he did 23 billion, but I died because I was trying to change the song I was listening to while I was on raid. So that was like minus 30 seconds. So he could do about 25 billion. Now let me compare that to. So he does do slightly more than Mihawk and Raid. I don't know if he's better than Sukuna for Raid though. I'll have to do a video comparing them. But should you buy Mash over Mihawk? I don't think so. He, I think he does do a little bit more in Raid. Well, I know he does a little bit more in Raid, but I think he's a pretty good amount slower in Dimensions. Or you could just get both if you want. But I would just get uh, Mihawk and then try and get Kurami or Guts, preferably Guts. So I don't really think Mash is that good. I wouldn't recommend buying it, besides stat points. Okay guys, make sure to like and subscribe for a million dollars in real life. I will be giving 30 million dollars in gift cards for the next person who subscribes to my channel, hits like, and comments done. Hi!